state time to be holy. Speak off with thy Lord. Abide in him always. And feed on his word. Make friends of God's children. Help those who are weak. Forgetting in nothing. His blessing to see. Take time to be holy. The world rushes on. Spend much time in secret with Jesus alone. By looking to Jesus, thy king thou shalt be. Thy friends in thy conduct, his likeness shall see. Take time to be holy. Let him be thy guide. And run not before him. Whatever be time, in joy or in sorrow, still follow thy Lord. And looking to Jesus, still trust in his word. Take time to be holy, be calm in thy soul. Each thought and each temper beneath his control. Thus, led by his spirit to fountains of love, thou shalt. Soon be fitted for service aboard. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Almighty Father, we come before you for your word of holiness. We want to be conformed unto you. We want your holiness divine in our lives. Divine, I am asking that the God of heaven will sanctify his people. Amen. The holiness of God, Lord, shall be upon his, your congregation. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am asking divine as the word comes. Your people will believe your word. They will exercise faith in you. And you will perform the experience of holiness in their hearts. The experience of sanctification in their hearts. You will lift up your people high to the standard of the holy and blameless life. In the name of Jesus. Divine, you said, without holiness, no eye shall see the Lord. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. And you desire that we shall see you. Therefore, God, make your people holy. So we can be with you, walk with you, and be with you in heaven forever. In Jesus' name, we pray. I'm speaking to you on the doctrine of sanctification and holiness the doctrine of sanctification and holiness righteousness centers on the lord jesus and is obtainable by man through faith righteousness and holiness center on Jesus and you can have access to righteousness and to the holiness of life as you believe on the Lord Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 1 verse 74 and 75 the Bible says that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives. All the days of our lives, not for one day, 
not for conference period not for one week not for one year not when you were a child when you were a youth no for all the days of your life the bible tells us in the book of romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 romans chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believed to the jew first and also to the greek for therein is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith as it is written the just shall live by faith the gospel of christ the gospel of christ it is the power of god you want the power of god in your life you would discover it in the gospel of christ it is the power of god you say yes i have seen the power of god to heal i have seen the power of god to perform the miracles i have seen the power of god that opens the eyes of the blind i have seen the power of god that can that that destroys the works of the enemy the forces of the enemy i have seen the power of god through the gospel yes there is the power of god unto salvation the power of god unto salvation is in the gospel of christ salvation from sin in the gospel by the hearing of the gospel by the believing of the gospel the power of god you will experience in your life then it says for daring in the gospel in the gospel is the righteousness of god revealed the righteousness of god revealed the standard that god desires come alive through the gospel what god has provided for righteousness and holiness is revealed in the gospel the standard of life that god wants you to attain that god wants you to walk in is revealed in the gospel it's by the preaching of the gospel that your eyes open to know how god wants you to live what god wants you to possess for daring is the power of is the righteousness of god revealed from faith to faith righteousness of god revealed from one level to another level much is in the gospel much is in the gospel they have to come to you by revelation jesus christ said to simon peter said to simon he said flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you but my father which is in heaven revelation of the righteousness of god come from the gospel of christ from faith to faith it means you exercise faith you 
get the righteousness of God. You get the manifestation of the power of God in your life for one thing. Then you go to another level. You exercise faith again and you get again the manifestation of the power of God in your life. And in that way, from one faith to another faith, from faith to faith, it is as it is written, the just shall live by faith. The gospel of Jesus. The kingdom of God. The total package God has for mankind is like a building that has so many rooms. And each room has its own peculiar treasure. Having its own key. You go to that room and use that key and open to the treasure that is in that room. Then you inherit it. But remember, you open to that room. That's why you have access to the treasure. There's so many rooms there. And each room has its own key. That key is faith. There are so many packages in the gospel of Christ that you have to use faith to possess. And this morning, I am bringing the package of sanctification. The package of the holiness of life. And you are going to use the key. That is the key of faith to possess. You will possess sanctification. Now, that's the word of God. The experience of grace I receive by faith. All things are possible by faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. It is impossible to receive from him. Our attention in this message is how you get sanctified and how you walk with God in holiness of life. And because I'm teaching the, gospel, the doctrine of sanctification, I want to make it orderly so you can understand well. I want to begin with you somewhere and take you to the fullness of God. Number one, I will speak to you on the Christian experience of salvation. The Christian experience of salvation. Day number two, the Christian experience of sanctification. The Christian experience of sanctification. Day number three, cleansing from yourself and from God. And be cleansing by yourself and by God. Because both you and God will walk together. To arrive at the blessing of the gospel in your life. Now, the Christian experience of salvation. The gospel of Christ offers salvation from sin to the sinner. Who exercises faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. The sinner is brought face to face with his sins and the consequences and is offered a new life in Christ Jesus. In the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23. Romans chapter 6 verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's the gospel message to the sinner. Your sin will end you dead. Your sin will end you eternal dead. Will bring miseries to your life. But God has provided a way. The gift of God. The way out of your sin. And that way is Jesus Christ. And eternal life can be obtained through Jesus. 
you believe on the Lord Jesus, then you will be delivered from your sin and you will possess eternal life. That is the gospel message to the sinner. When the sinner listens to this gospel, repents of his own sins, and exercises faith on the Lord Jesus, he receives the experience of salvation. The gospel of salvation. The sinner hears the gospel, believes the gospel, he receives salvation. Now, now, that's what the gospel does. And when the sinner is receives salvation from sin, there is the evidence of the life of righteousness. And salvation from sin is otherwise called born again experience. He is born again. It is called reconciliation with God. The sinner is reconciled. It is called adoption. He becomes a son of God. A child of God. Because he has put on the nature of God. He is alive in spirit. For God is spirit. So. He is regenerated. Reformed inside him. Into the newness of life. That is. The, the life. Of the sinner. Who repents. And believes on Jesus. He is now righteous. Let's look at the book of John. Chapter 1. Verse 12. And verse 13. John chapter 1. Verse 12. And verse 13. The Bible says. But as many. As received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Who were born? Which were born? Not of blood. Nor of the will of the flesh. Nor of the will of man. But of God. They have received Jesus. Therefore, they have, be, they have received the power to become the children of God. The power to walk in the righteousness of God. To faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. When you gave your life to Jesus, you rejoiced because you, you had gotten a new life. You were so joyful, so happy. You celebrated your joy. You praised God. You thanked God. There, there, there were the evidences of the new life. In fact, even the people around you knew that you were new. You were saved. You were born again. You know, that's what the Bible says. Behold. I mean, if any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold. All things become new. Behold means... It's an exclamation mark. Look at it with a surprise. See, he's changed. His life has changed. When you go home, you who got born again in this place, praise the Lord. And one of our sisters will be sharing with us 
I said, our brother was telling us that he saw Jesus and three angels. One also told me the same thing this morning. And that Jesus, were, Jesus was so happy with those who came out to give their lives to Christ and was rejoicing and was saying their names have entered into the book of life. <clears throat> so, now you rejoice. You are happy. That your name has entered the book of life. You are changed. But, you know, we have to say this because we are in the world of reality. We are in the world of reality. Your Christian, because you're born again, you have interest to serve God. You have interest to live the righteous life. You have interest to live the godly life. And you make your effort to keep the commandments of God. Now, will things continue like that? Why do we again talk about the experience of sanctification? The reason is because of realities of life. That's why I talk to you, number two, the Christian experience of sanctification. Universal Christian experience shows that after the experience of salvation, in the process of the Christian work and maturing, the believer notices some unwholesomeness in his life. There is inner crisis or struggle within with some sinful habits and pollutions. Universal Christian experience. It means believers in Nigeria feel something. You were God, you got born again, beautiful. You rejoice, fine. But in the process of the Christian life, as you are marching forward, rejoicing in the Christian life, you come, you come at a thing that is surprising you. That there's some struggles in your life. There's some, a kind of some deaths you are feeling inside your heart. There you begin to notice some unwholesome Christian, sorry, unwholesome habit that even you condemn. They, you condemn, you condemn. Some feelings, they are unrighteous feelings. Where is this thing coming from? But I am a believer. Yes, you are a believer. You don't commit immorality anymore. Why? If it, the Bible says, all that are born of God do not commit iniquity. You don't commit immorality anymore. You don't steal anymore. Those are practical things. You don't do them anymore. You don't go to do evil anymore. Yes. But what are you noticing in your heart? What are you noticing? What prayer are you noticing in your heart? What type of deeds are you noticing in your heart? You're noticing pride? Yes, you sense it. You sense it. You're seeing pride, but you're born again. Why? Why am I seeing pride in my life? You're seeing a kind of a tendency to anger that is unwholesome. A believer can be angry. Be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. But hey, you see your own anger. No, there's something here. No, something is wrong here. You, you are seeing envy wants to raise up its own ugly head. When did this one come in my way? Where are these things coming from? You see that how you get easily provoked. So why? This thing, come. I am in a battle here. I am in a struggle here. I am seeing something wrong here. I am seeing some unclean desire here. But I am a Christian. Yes. Universal Christian experience. It, as it happens to the believers in Nigeria. It happens to the believers in America. It happens to the believers in India. 
It happens to the believer in Russia. It happens to the believer all over the world. A universal experience. It happens. Then, the sweetness of the Christian life you began with, you are not enjoying them fully anymore. The beautiful, beautiful, wonderful Christian liberty you started with, you are not seeing it fully anymore. Says there is a crisis in my life. Something is wrong. Yes. Something is actually wrong. Everybody says something is really wrong. Say it again. Exactly. What actually is that thing that is really wrong? Then, the gospel of Jesus presents sin in two forms. Two different natures, characters. One is the sin committed. The other is the sin inherited. One is the actual sin you are responsible of. The other is the nature of sin you got from Adam. This is the case. You were when you got born again, Jesus said to that woman, "Go and don't commit adultery anymore. It is in the power of you not to commit adultery because this as is you got to do. Now you have received power not to do them anymore. But then, what about this inner nature of sin? What do you do with it? How do you settle it so that you can be fully free? How do you settle it? Jesus knew of it and prayed for his believers. He prayed for his disciples that that sinful nature in them should be cleansed. And that experience is called sanctification. In the book of John, chapter 17. John, chapter 17. We read from verse 14. I have given them thy word. And the world hath hated them. Because they are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. They are born again. They are righteous. They are not of the world. They are clean. Right? They are righteous. They have been transformed. The world hates them. Because they don't go to do those evil anymore. They have been saved from actual sins. Then Jesus now still prayed further for them. For inner cleansing that shall come to them. Look at it in verse, in, uh, let's continue. In verse 16 and 15. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world. But that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world. Even as I am not of the world. They have come to me. They are mine. All that are thine are mine. So, they, they are even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy, thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify them. Now that they're born again, they're children of God. Lord, do that next walk in their life. The next walk of going into cleansing them of the sinful nature inside to grant them full liberty of righteousness and holiness. When I was with them, those children of God, they were struggling over position. Who would be the greatest after I had left? 
When I was with them, I saw them very manifesting a kind of a pride that they belonged to a system and that only them should glory. They saw some casting out devils and they said, they forbade them. Now you don't follow with us. Why do you want to do that? Who, who gave you the license? When I was with them, I saw them saying we, they wanted to call fire down and consume one of the cities of the Samaritans. So, I saw unwholesome life in them that is not in conformity with the full nature of God. Lord, sanctify them. They need a second touch. They need a second touch. It was illustrated. It was demonstrated in the blind man that was brought to Jesus. When Jesus touched his eyes, he said, look up and see. What do you see? I can see, but I see me like what? I see me like trees. I can manage my way because I can easily escape where I see a tree standing. I am better than before. But that's not the state. That's not the perfect state. God intends man to be. Jesus touched him again the second time. I said, now see, what do you see? What did he say? I see things clearly now. Sanctification, a second touch is required for a clearness of your Christianity. A wholesomeness of your Christianity. A, a, a full revelation of your righteousness and holiness in the presence of God. It gives you the joy of Christianity. The happiness. And Jesus said in verse 20, Neither pray I for this alone, but for them also who shall believe on me through their word. I'm not praying just for these ones. But every time a person believes on me, this experience of sanctification will be required in his life. Anytime. Anywhere. In every generation. But then we say, why? Why didn't God do it at once? Known unto God are all his works. From the beginning of the earth. There are things in this life that have processes. The process of bringing it to the finishing product. Is that so? They have processes. So God has processes of bringing someone to the finishing product. Number one. You get born again. Then another thing stands up. You get sanctified. Day, another experience becomes acquired. You get baptized in the Holy Spirit. There are three separate experiences that come by faith. For therein, in the gospel of Christ, the righteousness of God, the fullness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As you exercise faith, you get born again. You exercise faith, you get, you get sanctified. You exercise faith, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. God designed them like that. That's the all wise God. That's the all wise God. And these are in the gospel. Well preached, clearly preached, clearly presented. The Bible says, if a trumpet does not make a distinction it's in, in, in its sounding, who can, what will, how, how will people read meaning from its noise? If the gospel is not clearly presented, how would people benefit? How would people receive the benefit of grace? When the gospel is muzzled, 
when the gospel is presented to you in a kind of an uncloudy a kind of cloudy mist how can you design what is required for your life that's why the bible says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, he shall be saved. But how shall they call on him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they be, I mean, uh, how shall they, oh, sorry, how shall they call upon him on whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? A preacher is required to cause you to know the truth and receive the benefit of the gospel by making the gospel so clear so that you can believe you will believe sanctification today so that's what the word of god is telling us i told you of this inner crisis or struggle within with some sinful pollutions of pride, anger, malice, unforgiveness, loss, disobedience, and you know these things are evil, but they are a power inside you. They are there. You cry to God, Oh God, see, I've done this now. Oh God, see the way I'm thinking now. Oh God, you cry to God now. As I've told you already the life of the disciples. I want you to know that this carnality was also seen among the Corinthian Christians. Look at it in the book of 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We read from verse 1 to verse 3. For I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for he that all ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strive and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? When you see your life, he called them brethren here. He's dealing with people who have accepted Christ, but there was this carnality not settled. There was this carnality. There was this strife among them. There was this envy among them. There was this struggle. I am of Paul. I am of Apollos. No, where are you be? No, don't no. There was this self-protection. There was this this and that among them. And that may, that resists the beauty of Christ's church. This carnality is responsible for the accidents the church of Christ faces for the disasters the church of Christ faces for many people because of carnality because they cannot submit because they want to make a show of themselves they easily break away from the church to go and start their own some struggle why are you appointing that person why did you call that person I also need a position of prominence I want also to be known I also. So they start struggling among them. What is happening? There is that sinful nature. Do they not know that it is evil? They knew but they don't know what to do about it. Don't you really know? That your life is not complete. Don't you really know that the passions that are rising up from within you, they are unwholesome Christian passions. They are unwholesome. Yes, you should know it. You do them yourself. And they bring struggles. Get, let them gather men of God together. And you will still see. Some who are carnal will still manifest themselves there. 
they will still manifest themselves because of this nature that is inside them jesus said sanctify them that's the carnality that's the carnality and for holiness of life that carnality has to be dealt with in your own life it's part of carnality when you're always pointing to another person hey yes deal with him pastor preach to them uh, you're not among them it's part of carnality so that is the situation this carnality is a disturbance to, to your life. It is a disturbance to the church. It is a disturbance to the almighty God. The God of holiness. Who always sees fighting in his church. Striving in his church. Struggling in his church. It is a disturbance to him. Well, good news again. As the good news came to the sinner who made all effort, that which I want to do, I, can't, I find myself not doing them. That which I don't want to do, I find myself doing them. If I am doing that which I don't want, then sin has made me captive. There, here is this believer. Although delivered, actually, there is an inner struggle. There is an inner tension. There is a kind of death in him. He does not recommend for his life. He does not agree. He manifests this and regrets and confesses and pleads with God. What can I do? Good news. God has made provision for that. Yes. That's God provided solution to this inner pollution this inner spiritual weakness and defilement in the believer and that is through this experience he put it in an experience and that experience is called sanctification he puts it there you can go there and get it there yes and this experience is by faith. This experience is by faith. Now, let's go to Ephesians. Chapter 5. Verse 25 to 27. The Bible says, Husbands, Love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the world that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. Can you see something? Church, husband, that wife you have married, love her. Christ has already gotten a church out of the world as a wife to himself. He has already gotten a church out of the world, but he has a vision for that church, the body of believers. What is that vision that he may sanctify it and cleanse it with the washing of water 
talking about the power of the world by the world that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot but now a believer but you have spot not having spot or no wrinkle wrinkle due to age or due to nature of face no no wrinkle not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish for Christ to bring his church to this point they say he gave himself for it for Christ to bring the sinner from the world to his kingdom to become a member of his church what happened he died for the sinner in the world to bring him to salvation now for Christ to bring the one that is now a member of his church to holiness of life he gave himself for him again it means the date of Christ as far as perfecting righteousness is concerned has dual purposes one to bring a, believe, a sinner to a believer two to bring a believer to holiness and righteousness perfect holiness and righteousness does it he does it in processes first there is the washing of the dirty cloth you put that dirty cloth in a detergent. You wash it to wash away the dead. After that, what do you do? You take it to another water for rinsing to ensure all the dead is gone. You are taken to the blood of Jesus for your initial cleansing called born again. Now, you need to be taken again to another, to another water. The cleansing by the cleansing of the world through the effect, effective work of the blood again on you. A second process that will now lead you to holiness of life. Sanctification. Holiness. That the inner dates of your life should be purified out of you. God designed it like this. Do we ask him question? Are we going to ask God why? He is so gradual. Even after he has done this, the Holy Ghost has not come yet in baptismal major. You have to come back again. Is that not so? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power of God unto salvation. To everyone that believes. For therein is the gospel, the righteousness of Christ. The righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith to faith. That's how it is. Now, what you need, therefore, is to come before God for the sanctification of your heart. The gospel of sanctification is not to the sinner. The sinner is the gospel of regeneration. The sinner is the gospel of forgiveness of sins. The sinner is the gospel of being born again in Christ. But the gospel of sanctification belongs to you. So that you will live from being a believer to holiness of life holiness of your heart because the full vision of God is that you may be holy having no spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that there be no blemish in your life that's the total vision it's only it's gradual in taking you there so sanctification look at it in the book of Acts of Apostles chapter 18 Acts chapter 18. I read verse, sorry please, Acts chapter 26 verse 18. 26 verse 18. Here the Bible says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, salvation, born again, regeneration, 
adoption. That they may receive forgiveness of sins. After that, what else? An inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. You see it. That's Jesus speaking. Your sins have been forgiven. Initial experience. Then come again. And get your heart sanctified. And that is by faith. Now, that brings me to the, 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 the various meanings of that word sanctify. The word sanctify has this meaning. One, it means consecrate. Number two, it means purify. To consecrate, you dedicate. You dedicate. And in that form, you do it. That's your first responsibility as a man. Dedicate yourself. Set yourself apart. Then, the second meaning is purify. That is divine work. That is a divine work. It is like the sinner repents. That is his own job. The sinner repents. Then to save the sinner is divine work. So both man and God are expected to perform their duties in this experience of sanctification. You do your part. Now, then God will do his part. That is definitive, instantaneous, because the blessings of faith are instantaneous blessings. Is that so? You got it. You believe, you receive. You receive, and I have got it. So, sanctification is given to you. It is done. Then, of course, there is the growth in holiness. You grow. You have been brought into a state because you now begin to increase as you see light. As your understanding improves. So, you are also increasing in holiness. You are also increasing in love. You are perfecting holiness. As your understanding comes up you move forward you will never see no that which i see not teach thou me if i saw that i was wrong i will sin no more that's growth in holiness that's the word of god now you have seen that you have your part is it everybody that can be sanctified no not every believer can bring himself to the point is ready to even bring himself to the point where God will sanctify him. I'm going to take you through the processes. Your role. What is expected of you to make you receive this experience of God. It's a costly thing. God is preparing people for heaven. Heaven is a costly place. That is the perfection of perfection. And God is preparing people for that place. And it is holy people that will go there. God will be very strict. God will be very sincere in preparing you for that place. Iniquity can never go there. That's why the gospel of holiness comes to you. What then is your responsibility? As one that desires sanctification. One, yield yourself to holiness. In the book of Leviticus, chapter 11, verses 44 and 45. Leviticus chapter 11, verses 44 and 45. The Bible tells us here saying, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy, for I am holy. 
Neither shall ye defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. For I am the Lord that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt to be your God. Ye shall therefore be holy, for I am holy. Can you see God's instruction? Your heart must be made up for this holiness. You must be ready to yield your members as instruments of righteousness. You must be ready to make a covenant with your tongue. I am purpose that my lips shall not transgress. You must be ready to make a covenant with yourself that your hands shall not do iniquity. You must be ready to make a covenant with your feet that your legs shall not go to wrong places. This is the quiet of you. Ye shall therefore be holy. For I, the Lord your God, I am holy. That's the word of God. That's the instruction of the living God. And that's your own decision. God cannot force this on you. He does not force salvation on sinners. He does not force repentance from sinners. He expects them to repent. So he expects you to consecrate for this holiness by making up your mind. Gathering yourself. Gathering your mind, your strength to bear on holiness. That's your responsibility. Again, presenting your body a living sacrifice. Presenting your body. Look at it in the book of Romans chapter 12. I read in verse 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and verse 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You want God to pour the power of holiness in your life? You want God to seal you up in the holiness experience, sanctification of heart? Then present your body to God blameless. All these clothes you are putting on, all these rags you are putting on, all these bare body clothes you're putting on can will hinder holiness. They will hinder sanctification experience. It will not work. Your body has to be presented to God holy and acceptable to meet the standard of God before you can think of God making you holy. Before you can think of God sanctifying your heart. There must be conformity to the standard of God in your clothing. And be not conformed to this world. But be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. You must change the way you see things. Otherwise, your perspective of life will hinder holiness. Your perspective of life. The way you see material things. The way you see money. The way you see women. The way you see men. The way you see houses. The way you see buildings. The way you see school. The way you see certificate. The way you see this can hinder holiness. For you to come to the holiness of God that the Lord will put his stamp upon you and put his seal upon you, you must present your body. Present your body. So, it is out of place to put on rags and claim you are holy. It is out of place to dress 
outside the standard of the divine God and be thinking of holiness is not possible. You have not made the qualification. You have not come to the standard. Although you are a child of God anyway, but you have not consecrated yourself for it. You have failed in your duty and God cannot stamp you. He has to examine that passport properly before he puts the stamp of a visa on it. God cannot stamp on you because you, your thoughts, your approach to life is different. The way you see life, you have not seen life in the way God wants you to see it. You have not seen God in the way God wants you to see it. You have not seen the gospel of Jesus in the way God wants you to see it. He cannot stamp holiness on you. Present your body a living sacrifice. Again, put off your ornaments from you. Put off your ornaments from you. In the book of Exodus, chapter 33. Exodus, chapter 33. Yes, I'm talking to you. What can make God do his own part? The part of God is great over your life. But you must conform. He says in verse 4 to verse 6. And when the people heard these things, these evil tidings, they mourned, and no man did put on him his ornaments. For the Lord had said unto Moses, Say unto the children of Israel, Ye are a stiff necked people. I will come up into the midst of thee in a moment and consume thee. Therefore now, put off thy ornaments from thee, that I may know what to do unto thee. And the children of Israel stripped themselves of their ornaments by the Mount Horeb. They were children of God. They had crossed the Red Sea. God has declared of them, they are my people. But to lead them to experience of holiness, put off your ornament from you. These ornaments that are disturbing your heart, they compete with God in your life. They are idols in your life. They can never permit holiness. They cannot. They cannot. They carry your attention. They draw your attention. Your mind is there. They cannot allow holiness in your life. God cannot put his seal on you. The seal of holiness with ornaments in your body. With your jewelry. Earrings, rings, bracelets, nuts, jewels, chains, and so on. All these things for beautify, to beautify yourself. That mind that wants to beautify itself is sin, is defilement. That mind that thinks after the flesh, I'll put on this, I'll put on this, how do you see, how do you see? that is of evil. The stamp of righteousness, of holiness of God. You can be a child of God, but not holy. And God has not approved you on holiness. All your effort, all the effort you are making on holiness. Praise God for your effort, but you have not qualified for God to recognize it. It's not acceptable. In the book of First Peter, chapter 3. First Peter, chapter 3. I read verse 3 to verse 5. The Bible says, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit spirit which is in the sight of God of great price for after this manner in the old time the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in subjection unto their own husbands for 
after this manner, the holy women that God put his stamp upon them, the holy women that were qualified to be registered in the Bible and be called so, they dressed, they never put on ornament. Else they couldn't be holy women. Because their ornamentation was ornamentation of the heart in that which is not corruptible. Even the ornament, the beauty of a meek and quiet spirit, which in the sight of God is of great price. That's the person, the lowest stamp. You must do something for your holiness. You must contribute. If you fail, God cannot stamp you with death. There's death in your life. There's pollution in your life. He will not give. Don't give holy things to dogs. That's the word of God. He cannot give you holiness. He cannot give you the grace of holiness. Why? Because although he brought you from the world to the church, you're from part of his church. He wants to take you from there to holiness. Because it's not all members of the church that go to heaven. Those who are holy. And if you must be holy, you have your role to play. You have your role to play. Yes, in the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 8 to verse 10. The Bible tells us here saying. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 8 to 10. I will therefore that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting, in like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefulness and sobriety, not with broid broided or braided hair or gold or pearls or costly array, but that, but which becometh women professing godliness with good works. Holiness. I will that men everywhere give themselves unto holiness. Women, for this holiness to be possible, for the God of heaven to stamp holiness in your life, for the God of heaven to sanctify you and make you holy, lift you up to the standard that he will say you're holy. Modest dressing, modest apparel, godly dressing must be, you must do it. This is what you should do. Clothes don't come down from heaven upon your bodies. You put them on. Therefore, put off your, your bad clothes from you. All these clothes that are exposing your tie, they cannot make you holy. You, you cannot receive the blessings of holiness. You cannot receive the blessings of sanctification with those ties that you are exposed to step the heart of others. You can't. All those tight fitting dressing you're putting on that brings up your shape can never, can never allow holiness in your life. The Holy Ghost cannot do, you do it. Remember baptism in the Holy Ghost and holiness are two different things. In case you say you speak in tongues. You speak in tongues. But then, it, those who go to heaven are those who are holy, not those who speak in tongues. How do you even know? Maybe your tongue has even expired, you don't know. I'm talking to you about it. So that you don't come, come, and, let, let, come and take confidence in the sand. Building your house upon the sand. We are talking about building your house upon the word of God. Building your house upon the rock that cannot be challenged. Holiness. Your clothing. And again, not with braided hair, fanciful hair, attachment, with all, palming, jerry coiling. It is never possible forever for a woman in that condition to receive the seal of holiness of God. It's not possible. It has never worked in the world. It cannot happen because the nature of God does not change. For I am God and I change not. It's not possible. That is a defilement. That here, what you have put, the dye that you put in that here is a sign of defilement and the God of heaven can never stamp you. He cannot stamp you with holiness. It's not possible. Argue it and finish your work and go to hell. 
Argue and finish your pastoral life and go to hell. Argue it and finish your ministerial life and go to hell. We don't go to hell because we're ministers. We go to hell. We don't go to heaven because we're ministers. We go to heaven because we are holy. <coughs> the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They're not the thing that take to heaven. It is the holy life that takes to heaven. That's the work. That's what God expects of you. All this fanciful dressing. From buoyant to look dignified and great. And be carrying the ear about. And say okay maybe it's okay. We are going to invite ladies evangelists. Something ladies evangelists. Something is coming like a, this. This uh, tolo tolo. This. Uh, this. <laughs> This turkey that opened the wing and said, Oh, I am coming here. Ladies evangelists, that's not for heaven. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's holiness of life, meekness of life, humility of life, glory in natural appearance. That's the world. Again, you need to cleanse yourself. Look at it in the book of First and um, Second Corinthians, chapter seven, verse one. Second Corinthians, chapter seven, verse one. Having therefore these promises, daily beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Whatever is that which is wrong in your life. That it is in your power to cleanse. Cleanse yourself. If you want holiness. You want to serve God in holiness. You want the seal of holiness. God can never rub the, the oil of holiness upon dirty body. Go and bath yourself first. That's his word. Late us is our responsibility. To remove those things is your responsibility. To change those dresses is your responsibility. Late us to stop that evil relationship is your responsibility. To stop those way you speak is your responsibility. Late us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit perfecting holiness in the eyes of the Lord again to be holy set not your affection on things on the earth that's the condition you need Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to verse 4, if ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ seated on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Set your affections on things above. If you want God to seal you up in holiness, you want this experience of sanctification. Your mind, your thoughts, your pleasure should be of things of God. The Lord said, son of man, your pe the people come to you to inquire of me, but they set their idols in their faces. Shall I be inquired of at all by them? Say unto them, whoever sets his, sets his idol on his face and comes to inquire of me from the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him according to the multitude of his idols. You have said the pledges of this life. You have said the, the things of this life, the thrones of this life, the wealth of this life, the riches of this life, the popularity of this life. That is what you have said before you. And you say, God, make me holy. Which type of thing is that? Can God make such type of people holy? He will answer you according to the multitude of your idol. That's what he's saying. 
Remove all idols. Let nothing be cherished below, beside God. Whom do I have in heaven but thee? And there is none in the earth that I have loved beside thee. Not upon the earth that I have esteemed beside thee. You who set your wife as an idol and the voice of your wife makes you to tremble. You set your husband as an idol. The actions of your husband makes you to tremble. You set your officer as an idol. You set money as an idol. How can you be holy? It's impossible. How can you be holy? You have not exalted God. Didn't you hear what Jesus said? He that comes to me and does not forsake himself, does not forsake her husband, does not forsake his wife, does not forsake all he cannot be my disciple. I can't put holiness on him because it's not possible. It will not work. It will not work because your heart is not set on God. Your heart is set on things on earth. That heart can never get holy. It cannot be purified. It's not possible. Yes. Your heart is on money. It cannot be holy. You will try and fail. The mountain of holiness will be slippery for you. It cannot walk. Yes, then you must pray earnestly for this experience. That's your responsibility. Pray earnestly. See what the Lord is saying he will do for you in Ezekiel chapter 34, 36. Ezekiel chapter 36, I read from verse 25 to 28. Here, the Bible is telling us, Ezekiel 36, verse 25 to 28. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and ye shall be clean. From all your filthiness, and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. And a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and do them. And ye shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. And ye shall be my people. And I will be your God. In verse 37. Thus hear the Lord God. I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. Prayer is required. This is what I say. That's going to be what I want to do. When you consecrate, when you consecrate, this shall be my work. I will sprinkle clean water upon you. This shall be my work. I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. This shall be my work. I will put my spirit within you. This shall be my work. And I will cause you to walk in righteousness and holiness. This shall be my work. When you have done your work. But then. There is still another thing you need to do. I will yet for this be inquired of be requested because I put myself in the place of prayer that it is as you pray I answer and do it for you then go and pray I know the thoughts I have for you thoughts of peace are not of evil to give you a holy heart a holy life then ye shall go and pray unto me when ye shall call upon me ye shall and I will hearken unto you ye shall seek me and shall find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart go and ask earnestly for the holy life for ye have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin labor to get this holy spirit I mean holiness of heart labor consecrate to have this holiness pray fast if you can to get this thing from God. Prayer is required. Jacob prayed and prayed and wrestled to change his name from Jacob to Israel. Go and wrestle in prayer. I will yet for this. Then claim it by the confession of faith. <coughs> claim it. By the confession of faith, the Bible says, Therefore, whatsoever thing ye desire, when ye pray, believe. As you pray, believe. 
that they receive them as you pray believe you will come and see that the assurance will come the assurance will come this the, the assurance that you have got it now faith is the assurance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen the divine god will just bring wonderful assurance wonderful because it is of power and this power works by true faith as you claim it you pray and claim it and stand firm there god will answer you will hear the still small voice you will see the sign within you you will see the liberty and i the bible says when it says when the sun shall make you free what shall happen ye shall be free indeed i've come that i might give them life that i might give them more abundantly when it comes you will know for he that believeth in the son of god has the has the witness in himself the witness will come then your life will show the liberty the joy will come fullness of joy then you rejoice you rejoice as you walk with the lord in the mountain of his holiness when the lord sees your faith when the lord sees your consecration he it is his duty to purify your heart and lift you up to holiness by the power of grace by the power of grace he will release the grace upon you and sanctify you holy and preserve you in holiness in the book of first thessalonians chapter five first thessalonians chapter five we read verse 22 to 24 abstain from all appearance of evil and the very god of peace sanctify you holy that's what god will do when you have consecrated yourself you have yielded yourself the god of heaven will do his own and the very god of peace sanctify you holy i pray god that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our lord jesus christ and the bible says faithfully see that call at you who is who will also do it god will make you holy and preserve you i say he will make you holy and preserve you the god that sustains the sun in the sky shall sustain you in this polluted world the god that whose world sustained peter on top of the river the waters of the sea he shall sustain you by the word of his power the word of his holiness and he shall save keep you until the appearing of jesus christ god is able god is able it is the God that keeps the angels holy in heaven. He will keep you holy on the earth. The God that gave Enoch the grace to walk before him 300 years. He shall give you the remaining 30 years. He shall give you the remaining 50 years. He shall give you the remaining 40 years. Whatever period that is still required in your life. Enoch was 300 years. You, the remaining few years. That God will do it for you jesus died for your sanctification therefore submit consecrate for it come out fully dedicate for it be ye holy for i am holy rest up upon your feet my brother <coughs> let us go be, go to, the, the bible said cry that he might sanctify the people offered himself without the gate let's go to him there let's go to jesus and say lord I believe in you to sanctify me. Lord, sanctify me. But for that to be done, consecrate yourself. Every aspect of consecration must be carried out. Your dressing, check it up very well. If it's not proper, holiness cannot be possible. Will sanctify and preserve. Oh, 
unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to preserve, present you before the presence of his eternal glory without spot and blameless. Unto him be glory and majesty and dominion forever. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your more, Lord. Thank you for your mighty presence, Lord. Thank you for your glorious presence, my Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Look at the cross. Look at the cross. The Lord Jesus Christ gave himself for you. He was bruised. The blood was gushing out of his body. He shed his all his blood for you. We pray, Lord, cleanse me with your precious blood. Wash me thoroughly, Lord. Wash me, Father, with your precious blood. I confess my sin, Lord. We are short of the glory, Lord. We are short of your glory, my Father. We are short of your glory. We are putting the mask on our face, Lord. We are hypocrites, Lord. We are a hypocrites, my Father. Lord, I pray the holiness will come into our hearts, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We commit ourselves into your hand. We lay ourselves at thy altar, Lord Jesus. We pray all these things in the name of your only Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiry, contact us on 0813-635-6813 and 0805-683-4323. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. Oh.